in what many officials and analysis are calling the largest conventional military attack in Europe since the Second World War, the military invasion of Ukraine by Russia marked an escalation of a conflict that originally began in 2014. Around 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on February 24th, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a special military operation in Ukraine, and just minutes later, missiles began to hit locations across Ukraine, including its capital city, Kiev. Russia, despite its best efforts, has always been viewed as an aggressor country. Seeing that they have the firepower to match this reputation, the prospects of Ukraine defeating their invaders seem pretty slim at the moment. This does not mean the Ukrainian army is to be easily dismissed, however. Currently headed by the incumbent General Siri Shapdalov since July 28, 2021, the Ukrainian army has a little under 200,000 active army personnel. The blue and yellow flagged state is not lacking either in terms of military equipment, including, but not limited to, combat tanks, armored fighting vehicles, infantry vehicles, armored carriers, artillery, and defense systems, as well as small arms and ammunition. But how powerful are their military force and all of their weapons? Will it be sufficient to survive what most are now calling the Russo-Ukrainian War? To get a general overview of how powerful the Ukrainian military is, Perhaps a logical place to start is by analyzing their weaponry and firepower. Let's bring it in with combat tanks. The country has 165 T-84 Oplot M tanks fitted with 125mm and 120mm guns, and these MBTs are considered to be the fastest of their kind in the world. The Oplot M is one of the most renowned tanks in the world. Ukraine continued to develop the T-80UD main battle tank after the Soviet Union fell apart. The Oplot M is the most recent variant of this tank. The Oplot M is equipped with new generation explosive reactive armor. This MBT inherited the automated ammo loading technology from its predecessor. Rather than a separate compartment with blowout panels, ammunition is kept in the main compartment. It is a severe flaw in the tank since once the armor is breached, the ammunition is likely to explode, killing the crew and destroying the tank. The latest Ukrainian tank is not as precise as its Western counterparts against long-range threats. This tank, on the other hand, can fire anti-tank guided missiles in the same way that regular weapons can. The greatest range of these is 5 kilometers. The Oplot M features an independent commander sight with thermal vision, allowing the tank to participate in hunter-killer combat. Because it has more modern add-on armor, a more powerful engine, and a better fire control system, this Ukrainian tank outperforms the Russian T-90. However, it barely exceeds the current Russian Army T-90M in terms of engine power. Aside from this, Ukraine also has 340 T-80 tanks, 300 T-72 tanks, and 1,800 T-64 tanks, making a total of 2,605 tanks in active service in their military arsenal. While these tanks have either never seen real combat before now or never had to be used in this capacity, they are still no less effective than modern tanks with varying levels of speed and range and have significant killing force on the battleground. These tanks progressively piggyback off of each other in development. The T-84 has seen a modern tank on the T-80, and this is seen as development of the T-64 to become very effective and dangerous weapons, but observers say that the limited numbers of these they have in their possession makes the advantage almost irrelevant. They have a total of 126 infantry vehicles, ranging from airborne infantry vehicles to tank destroyers. The infantry fighting vehicles used by the Ukrainian armed forces are the Soviet Army BMP-3 and all of its previous versions. The BMP-3 is a successor to the BMP-1 and BMP-2 infantry combat vehicles developed by the Soviet Union and Russia. The original variant of the BMP-3 includes a turret-mounted 2A70 100mm rifled cannon, which can fire conventional rounds or 9M117 Bastion ATGMs. There are 40 100mm rounds and 8 ATGMs on board. The turret is equipped with a 2A72 30mm dual-feed autocannon with 500 rounds, with a fire rate of 350 to 400 RPM, as well as a 7.62mm PKT machine gun with 2,000 rounds. The angle of the main cannon is increased from 5 degrees to 60 degrees. Two 7.62mm PKT bow machine guns, each with 2,000 rounds, are also available. With its ATGM armament system, 9K116-3 Bosnia, the BMP-3 can engage targets at a range of 5,000 to 6,000 meters. The 2A70 cannon has a range of 4,000 meters when using conventional ammunition, such as the HE frag round 3OF32. 
According to the manufacturer's website, all weapons may be shot with equal efficiency from a standstill, while moving and while floating. During competitive assessments in the United Arab Emirates in 1991, the ability to attack moving targets with missiles was successfully demonstrated. Along with these BPMs, the Airborne Infantry Fighting Vehicles BMD-1 and BMD-2 are also used by Ukraine. Due to the losses in the ongoing conflict in Donetsk, the number of these infantry vehicles has reduced significantly. They have a little over 1,500 BTRs, Kazakhs, Humvees, and Saxons that serve as armored personnel carriers to safely transport their most important personnel from war zone to war zone. Unfortunately, 250 of these 8x8-wheeled diesel-powered armored personnel carriers with an operational range of 700 kilometers have been in a deadlock in the war. More impressive are the 475 152mm towed artillery, 1,505 powerful self-propelled artillery, and rocket launchers that they currently own in their arsenal. The BM-30 Smirch and Vilka rocket launchers are used extensively by the Ukrainian army. These launchers have firing ranges up to 90 kilometers, and they are very powerful and well-tested weapons. Some believe that if used strategically, it will significantly weaken their invaders and put them on equal footing, if not, give them the upper hand outright. They also have four S-300 V-1 long-range surface-to-air missile defense systems, 347 9K series surface-to-air missile defense systems, and less than six TOR short-range air defense systems. But that's not the full extent of their air force. They have a little under 120 mil Mi-128 and 11 helicopters, one for attack and the others for transport. Many of these helicopters have unfortunately been either lost or badly damaged in the course of the current conflict in eastern Ukraine. 35 of the Turkish Barricader Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicle and 70 of the American Raven Reconnaissance UAV. The Ukrainians use a variety of guns and rifles. While the AK-74 assault rifle is the standard rifle for the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the Special Ops Forces also use the Israeli 4221 assault rifles. Also in their arsenal are the AKS-74U, Barrett M107A1, SVDs, and so on. The Ukrainian Armed Forces also use mortars, servers, engineering vehicles, non-armored carriers, and other small vehicles. Although small compared to Russia's 900,000-man army, the Ukrainian army is still one of the largest armed forces in the European region with 196,000 active duty troops, 100,000 reservists, and territorial defense forces that include at least 100,000 veterans. Currently, more than 2,870 soldiers are said to have been killed in this war and about 3,700 wounded. But despite being incredibly outgunned and outnumbered in this war, military observers say that Ukraine is putting up a stiffer than expected defense against the Russians. And with support pouring in from various countries around the world, NATO and non-NATO members, the country seems to be holding up quite nicely against the looming threat of destruction. So, given the current situation in Ukraine and Russia, we thought we'd offer you a brief rundown. The inequality between the armed forces of these two nations is a crucial aspect in the battle as Russian soldiers invade Ukraine, hoping to seize the capital, Kiev, and topple the government. Russian soldiers outnumber the Ukrainian adversaries in practically every statistic, including size, strength, and technological quality of equipment. However, the Ukrainian troops have an edge in a handful of regions. To begin with, Ukrainian troops are protecting their nation, whereas Russian forces are fighting their neighbors, whom most Russians see as close relatives rather than mortal foes. Second, the Russians must set up logistical and supply systems in order to invade, which some footage from Ukraine suggests they are already doing. Soldiers march on their tummies and in the contemporary period on their vehicle fuel supply. An invasion of a country that fails to get the logistics correct will fail. Just ask Napoleon about his 1812 invasion of Russia. So, what are Ukraine's prospects of having a fighting chance? It's still pretty early to tell, but at the moment, things seem to be going positively for this smaller nation. There are even talks of Russia being open to a discussion or agreement of some sort. If things keep going in this direction, this war may end up being a lot quicker than we anticipated. But that's just our view. What do you think about Ukraine's chances in this war? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.